it green at the roundabout. And I'm going to move over to the other lane because there's a car on the inside. And we're going to follow that car. That's a red light that that other driver just ran. <laughs> car shuts off. Hi there, smart drivers in Madrid. And driving at the kind of roundabouts. They're not really roundabouts, they're kind of roundabouts. Huge bus right beside me. So I better be on the ball here. He's gonna run right up my butt. You can probably see it in the camera on the back there. So a little daunting driving here in Europe just because I'm not used to it. Yeah. And another red light right around the corner. But as I said, a little daunting driving here because roundabouts, different road culture, pedestrians don't jaywalk as much, which is good. <laughs> Lots of traffic, heaps of traffic. I can't really see the light because both cars pulled up in front of the light, but lots of shoulder checking, looking around, staying in your lane. Sometimes you got to push your way in and pushing your way in simply means holding your course. You don't want to be aggressive in your lane changes or moving around, especially when you're in the roundabouts as here, these big multi-lane roundabouts. So we want to stay to the outside. We want to stay in this lane and not move over in beside the other vehicles and see we lane to lane and then we exit shoulder checking moving over to the other lane signal on all the way can't turn there but can turn here the road markings are quite good here so keep an eye on the road markings and again we're watching the pedestrian crosswalk it's not flashing yet and when it does start flashing as it is right now that's when you know the light's going to change as soon as the walk sign goes to red, and we had somebody jaywalk, but we chose not to run over the over the man. I'm trying to think of what is it in Spanish, <laughs> and I can't. It's it's completely L something. It's escaping me. It's completely escaping me. My Spanish has not been going well here. It's been challenging to order stuff. El mujer is woman. Hombre, el hombre. That's Spanish for man. So I chose not to run over el hombre. 50 kilometers an hour. Part of the trepidation with driving here that I've had is you can't drive here without GPS. One of the mistakes I made when I picked the car up at the airport in Barcelona was I didn't ask them to change the GPS into English and it was in Spanish and we found it almost useless. Uh, it did get me to the hotel in Barcelona, but after that it didn't work out at all and we ended up using Tracy's phone rather than using the GPS on the car. And I'm just driving around uh, the hotel where we're at in Madrid and I'm able to kind of, you know, go out a few blocks and do some training for you and then come back. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of their roundabouts here, where the main road goes through the center of the roundabout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around and come back the other way here. And then lane splitting, you can see the motorcycle coming up between us here. This is common in Madrid. This is, was common in Barcelona. It's, I suspect, common all over Europe. A third of the traffic here, I would suspect, as a guess, a third of the traffic here is motorcycles and scooters. And they just move up to the front of the line and they proceed. I really like this automated engine shut off for the car. And then I'm changing lanes over to the left here because I want to turn left. And so I just go across the main street here when the light turns. And I make another left and then I make a right back onto the main street to turn around. So it's a little bit like the jug handles in New Jersey that I encountered years and years ago. I don't know whether they still have uh, jug handles in New Jersey, but uh, for those of you in the garden state, in New, the state of New Jersey, uh, let me know down in the comments if you have those jug handles because these are safer 
than making a left-hand turn at the intersection. It's a little bit slower getting through the intersection, but it is safer and reduces the number of collisions. It would be interesting to see some of the statistics at these intersections if they've kept those kinds of records and whatnot. And I guess we can just turn left here. There, isn't, there aren't any signs prohibiting that, so let's turn left and go back the way we came. You can see there's a huge green space on my right here with lots of trees and greenery and whatnot, part of the urban landscape. I wanted to go that way, but we'll go into the tunnel and see where we get lost here. And this is one of the ways that they increase space in the city urban landscape is with these tunnels. And of course, Madrid has a complete uh, underground metro system, which is really awesome. We took it downtown a couple of times here and uh, easy to use, you know, like any large city that has a metro. London that has a tube and New York that has a subway. And you can see how narrow this exit is out of the tunnel here. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a bit claustrophobic there, getting out of there. And eventually I just left my signal on and pushed my way over there and the car behind me let me in to come straight through. Again, shoulder checking before moving over, making sure the other vehicles are letting you in and whatnot. And then we get on this, you saw the signs there that this becomes a two-way as opposed to a one-way street. The double solid uh, white lines in the center of the road designate traffic going in two directions for the most part. And you see this person in front of me just push their way over. They didn't signal, but I knew they were because they were hugging the left line. So I just let off and let them come across. So it's like any other big city, slow to move around. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon. It's busy, lots of traffic, public transit, buses, cars. You can't be in a hurry, you gotta take your time. Uh, these newer cars, they all have collision sensors on them around the four sides of the vehicle in case you get close to them, especially in Europe, it's required. Uh, when you park the vehicle, the mirrors fold in automatically. So coming through those multi-lane roundabouts, just stay in your lane, shoulder check, make sure that the person behind you isn't cutting across. Here, this vehicle is coming across, shoulder check, shoulder checking both sides, making sure the other traffic isn't coming across. Again, the motorcycle back there, so we want to make sure that we don't change lanes into the motorcycle. <laughs> Definitely don't want to do that. So shoulder checking is really important. I mean, yes, you've got the sensors on the car and whatnot, makes up for checking, double checking. Yes, you have technology and you can use your technology, but you always want to back up, especially when you're observing. Never assume that the sensors are going to work for you. 